A few weeks back, I spoke with an Orthodox Jewish man from Baltimore who believes that his late deceased grand rabbi, the Rebbe, as they call him, Menachem Mendel Schneerson, who died in 1994 at the age of 92, he believes that that he is actually the Messiah. And Mendel, uh, thanks for calling back. You made a statement on the air that the the Jews of your particular religious persuasion called Lubavitcher Hasidic Jews, that most of them believe that your late grand rabbi is actually the Messiah, but they're afraid to say it because of the controversy. I asked a colleague of mine who is a Lubavitch rabbi in another location what he thought of that, and he said that, in his opinion, that most Lubavitchers believe that when the Messiah does appear, that it will be the Rebbe. So I I found that very interesting. Uh, You're convinced that he is the Messiah, and obviously you understand why many other traditional Jews reject that. Uh, He died in 1994. That's a long time ago. Are you surprised that nothing's happened since? No, not at all. In fact, I find that the prophecies that the Lubavitcher Rebbe Melech Mashiach made, starting with 1991 most recently, and before that as well, are all coming to fulfillment. In 1991, the Rebbe talked about how the war that was happening in the, in the Gulf region was the fulfillment of what it says in the Yalkut Shmoni. That's a famous book within Judaism that, of, that has prophetic uh, messages in it, where it says that when you see in um, Paras, Paras at the, at the time, was referring to Iran, but in particular now it refers to Iraq, making a war with Melech Arvi, that's the king, an Arab king, which was Kuwait at that time, and then Aram, the um, exalted nation, the superpower, being the United States, uh, gets into it. The whole world will be tittering, will be shaking and quaking. What's going to be? What's going to be? Especially the Jewish people will say, where should we go? What should we do? And the Rebbe says that at that time the Messiah will... Um, speak to the Jewish people and say, Bani, al tisro, my son, don't be afraid. All I've done, I've done for your sake. The time of your redemption has arrived. The Rebbe told us at that time that this would not be what other sages were saying at the time, that it would be a war the likes of which we hadn't seen since the Second World War, that there would be chemical attacks, that it would be the great loss of life. Instead, All right, tell you, tell you what, stay right, stay right there, we've got a break. Uh, we come back, I, I want to challenge you on something and say that the Rebbe did not suffer for the sins of Israel. Jesus, the Messiah, did. It's the Line of Fire with your host, Dr. Michael Brown. Your voice of moral, cultural, and spiritual revolution. Here again is Dr. Michael Brown. Thanks, friends, for joining us on the Line of Fire, 866-348-7884. Welcome to this Thoroughly Jewish Thursday broadcast. I was speaking with an Orthodox Jew, ultra-Orthodox Jew in Baltimore, Mendel, who believes that his late deceased Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson is the Messiah. And I'll tell you, you why you, I believe that, besides many other proofs taken from the Rambam, Maimonides, which is, is codified into Jewish law from the prophets themselves, the Rebbe said in 1991, in his public address of Parsha Shabbos Shoftim, he said that according to Torah law, Maimonides, Yesodei Torah, that's what I just cited, chapter 7, there is a prophet in our generation, and we're required to heed his directives. The Rebbe said it must be publicized to all members of the generation that we have merited that God has chosen a person endowed with free choice who is incomparably higher than the members of his generation as the judge, counselor, and prophet of the generation to provide instruction and advice pertaining to the service of all Jews. I, but, 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 but hang on, but Maimonides contradicted Torah and contradicted the Bible, so why should I follow Maimonides? Well, uh, I would have to disagree with you on that because Maimonides was the leading decisor of Jewish law, uh, and even up to today. But, but, but Maimonides, in his introduction to his commentary on the Mishnah, says 
that the majority rules based on a misinterpretation of Exodus 23.2. It's the opposite of what the Hebrew words say there. I mean, anyone reading it understands that. And on, on top of that, he said that if, if you have a thousand prophets of the caliber of Elijah and a thousand and one sages, rabbis, that the decision of the sages overrules the words of the prophets because the majority rules. So it, it's a fundamental principle that completely undermines Torah law and undermines the voice of the prophets. So why would I follow Maimonides, no matter what he says, with all respect to his genius and and what he codified and other things like that, but why would I follow him when he contradicted Torah and and overruled the words of the prophets? Well, I wouldn't follow Maimonides either if he did that. I would but have he, but to he did. Ma- he did. In fact, was said at his time to be the Messiah. There were people who called him that. And no, but, but, but hang on, hang on. I, I just want to stay on this one point. I, I don't know if you have, if it, I imagine you have this, this memorized, but, but uh, in, in Exodus chapter, chapter 23, uh, verse 2, uh, and, and th- this, of course, is, is miscited in, in the Talmud, Bavim Ritzia 59b as, as well, where it says, Achrei Rabin Mahatot, it, the, 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 here, I'll, I'll read it from the New Jewish Version. The, the whole verse, you shall neither side with the mighty, mighty to do wrong, nor shall you give perverse testimony in dispute so as to pervert it in favor of the mighty or the many. So do not follow the multitude to pervert justice, is what it's saying. And it gets taken out of context in both the Talmud and Maimonides. Maimonides defends it as the proper meaning of the, of the Hebrew words to say that you follow the majority. The majority is often wrong. And, and that's, that's what's hurt Judaism through the centuries, is that, that the prophetic voice of Jesus, the Messiah, was overruled by, by the majority of people or by key leaders. So Maimonides is contradicting Torah and, setting the, and, and contributing to a mentality that resists the prophetic word so the prophet will not be recognized. So I, I just want to know how you can follow him when he contradicts Torah. Well, of course, I wouldn't follow him if he contradicted Torah. And he happens to be the, one of the greatest decisors of Jewish law who ever lived. But and rather than get bogged down in this, what I really... No, 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 but it's important. It's important. I, I quoted a verse to you that, that the Talmud and Maimonides use in the, in the foundational way the opposite of what it says, and Maimonides defends that as the meaning of the Hebrew. That's blatantly wrong. I mean, that, that's severely wrong, and it's foundationally. It's foundationally important. Well, you so know as I, well as I, I do, Michael, that when it comes to the famous Gemara, which spoke about uh, hearing a voice from heaven versus what the sages were saying at the time, uh, that the, the answer was from the sages, we don't listen to the voice of, from heaven. We listen to what our sages tell us because God gave them the injunction to be the teachers to the entire Jewish people, the rabbis, the judges, and therefore, when it comes to a, an apparent dispute between what uh, a voice from heaven says and what the sages say, we follow what the sages say. If they tell you to go to the to the left, when you think you should go to the right, you go to the left. All right, all right. So, so just so just every, so everyone understands this, there's a dispute between the sages and and one of the leading sages of the generation, early second century. Uh, so Eliezer ben Hyrcanus, and uh, they're disputing about a particular oven, whether it's clean or not, called the Achnai oven. And in the dispute, he says, okay, if the legal ruling is according to me, because he answered all of their questions. So he, he had the better logic. They didn't receive it because they had the majority. So then he asked for miraculous confirmation. You know, may the carob tree be uprooted. May the, the stream stop in its course. May the walls of this building start to collapse. And he gets miraculous confirmation on every point, and they still don't listen because they're the majority, so they ignore his logic, they ignore miraculous confirmation, and then there's a divine voice, literally a, a, a bot coal, so a daughter of a voice. There, there is this uh, voice from heaven saying, why are you arguing with him? The ruling is according to him. And they jump up and say, the Torah is not in heaven it's the majority that rules. They misquote the end of Exodus 23 to make it say that the, the, it says, do not follow the majority to do evil. They quote it to say, follow the majority. So they overrule logic. They overrule miraculous confirmation. That's and awesome. they overrule the voice from heaven. And, and you're supporting that. How well, can that be, false. sir? No, Michael, that's false. You made a non sequitur there. You said that don't follow the majority to do evil. These people were not doing evil. They're doing precisely what God told them, that I give over to you 
the right and the obligation to interpret the law and to judge cases. But let's get on to another topic. Because uh, all right, so, gonna... so you acknowledge the text is being misused, that it's opposite. Not at all. They weren't, they weren't doing oh, All right, well, but then, doing... hang on. How, how in the world, how in the world can we even talk about something as esoteric as your, your belief that, that your deceased rabbi is the Messiah? I can demonstrate for you that Messiah had to come and die and rise before the Second Temple was destroyed. So he's, he's 2,000 years late anyway. But, but that, that being the case... When we can't even agree on the meaning of words, you, you want to talk, say, you know, dispute the, the theory of relativity, and, and you won't even agree that 2 plus 2 does not equal 5. You read into it, do evil, meaning that they went against the Bosco. That is not a proper uh, reading of evil. And what they did was, they, as I said before, precisely followed what God told them, that they are the ones to teach the Jewish people the law, not any boscal, nothing coming from heaven. Now, well, where I, does it say it? But, but, but here, Deuteronomy 18, and here's why I'm pressing it, because you're quoting from Maimonides talking about a prophet in every generation. That's Deuteronomy 18. But the very Maimonidean system says don't listen to the prophet, listen to the majority. That means, sir, please understand this, based on your own statement from Maimonides, based on the Talmud, based on what he articulates in his introduction to his Mishnah commentary, that you should not follow the rabbi, the rabbi, because the majority of the Jewish world and the majority of Jewish leadership say he is not the Messiah. Therefore, you should abandon your belief in him based on that principle. Okay, so now you, you um, helped me to get into where I wanted to go. Now tell me where you think this comes from. Behold, my servant should be very wise. When the time of the redemption comes, Mashiach will understand and know that the time for his revelation to the people that have longed for him has come. There will be wicked ones who are reviled and blaspheme Mashiach, this because of his great delay, and they will not believe in him at all. Those that are enlightened will understand that now is the true end of the exile and will await him, a man of pain. Mashiach is pained over the sins of the Jewish people, which have caused his delay and withheld him from being king over his people, and acquainted with sickness. One who is sick and is in constant anguish over his pain. Sickness can refer to pain that comes as a result of great longing, or it can mean actual sickness that comes from anguish. Indeed, he has borne our sick- sickness. He suffers over the sins for which we should be sick and suffer from, and the pain which we ought to feel. He endures their, their intensity, for he anguishes over them, and by his injury, we are healed. The injury over which he suffers heals us. For Hashem, for, now you're getting a clue of that, where this is coming from, for Hashem forgives us. And or, so, yeah, so, so just to jump in, of, of course it started with Isaiah 52, 13, Hinei Askil Avdi, those, those words, and now it's been, it's been weaving in other words from Isaiah 53 of Ahavra to Nir Palanu and things like that, and by his wounds were healed, those concepts but the larger quote is obviously not from Scripture, and it's not from, from Talmud, and it's not from the most uh, ancient of the Midrashic compilations. So we've got another break. I'm going to keep you on with me, Mendel, but uh, what source were you reading from, sir? Well, it's going to be a shock to you, but it comes from the Igoras Ramban, from the ah. letters of the Ramban, uh, volume okay, one, but... page 322. Most people Perfect. would tell me I'm reading from a Christian source. No, 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 no. You, you've, you've helped my cause more than you realize. But as I said... I recognized it was not it was not from Talmud or ancient Midrash, so it's from 12th century. But thank you for reading it. It's the Line of Fire with your host, Dr. Michael Brown. Get into the Line of Fire now by calling 866-34-TRUTH. Here again is Dr. Michael Brown. Welcome back, friends, to the Line of Fire broadcast, 866-348-7884. All right, uh, so Mendel, just so I can jot this down, uh, because I, uh, with all the reading I've done, I have not read that source in full, so... The uh, citation the source, is Letters yeah. of the Ramban, Volume 1, page 322. And those who are familiar with Jewish history know that the Ramban had a famous debate at, the cost, at, at possibly the cost of his life 
with somebody called pa- Pablo, and that person was a, a converso. Yeah, pa- so he- Pablo, Christi- Pablo Christianity. Of course, we have primarily the reports as they were passed on by Jewish right. sor- sources. Yes, yeah, so, so, so Ra- is- Ramban is, is in the generation. He's 12th. 13th century, the generation one after that... Rambam, right? And I've only read excerpts of that, uh, not not the whole of it. So uh, well, here's I, my I, point, I... Michael. I'm not helping your cause. I wouldn't call if I thought I was. I want the listeners to know that where Christian thinking coincides with Jewish thinking, because originally Christians were Jews. That Jewish people, like myself, or Orthodox Jews in general, or even my particular group have nothing to fear because we don't give up a mikvah, a ritual pool that we go to before Shabbos and, and uh, before holidays uh, uh, to become spiritually pure, purified, because the Christians have taken it over and called it a, um, a baptism pool. We don't uh, do anything that stops the Jewish uh, teachings and practices and customs that we have just because ch- Christians have taken over. I'll give you one good example. Lubavitchers, when they go to sleep at night, when they say the, the nighttime prayer on the bed, put, uh, put uh, well, um, no, let me, let me correct that. In the morning when we wake up and we say, Moda Anila to thank God for giving back our soul, we put our two hands together underneath our chin and we say, Moda Anila Fanecha Melacha We thank God for giving back our souls. So we haven't strayed away from that. We still put our hands together like that, uh, even though Christians do it. I'm not hurting our cause. I'm helping our cause. People who are interested in this can go to PSAK, P-S-A-K, DIN, D-I-N, yeah, dot net. Let, 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 me, let me just say this, Mendel, just, just real quick, just so you're clear. I know it's not your intent to help our cause, but in point of fact, there are Lubavitchers who've come to faith in Jesus the Messiah because they've realized that they were rejecting the true Messiah all these years. And whether you know it or not or understand it or not, God is actually using the teaching about Menachem Schneerson being the Messiah to help Jewish people come to faith in Jesus the Messiah because we recognize, wait, wait, he did have to die. He did have to suffer. He did have to rise. The fact is he's also already become a light to the Gentiles. He has also fulfilled that aspect of the prophetic words that he was rejected by his people, but he has become a light to the Gentiles. Who is it? Jesus, the Messiah. And he had to do all this before the second temple was destroyed. So Mendel, I, I believe that you are deeply sincere. I don't question your devotion. I don't, I don't question the way you live. I, I applaud you for persevering in the midst of difficulty. I just want to say that you're on a, the right track. You just haven't gotten to the destination yet. I would love to help you get there. Well, you now, know what, obviously, Michael, Jews for Judaism, of which I was a part, made a, one of them made a call to me, uh, let's say Shabbos, a couple of weeks ago. His name was Ellie Cohen, and I think you know him. Sure. And he said that maybe I shouldn't be even engaging with you. But my point is that I, by engaging with you, can speak to your Jewish listeners, and I can tell them to go to AskMoses.com and the Gentile listeners to go to AskNoah.com and also to NoahHides.org to get further information. But the reason I, don't, I told Jews for Judaism when I was with them once that we don't have any fear of, of, of telling the truth, Jewish truth, because in the beginning when it talks about God uh, creating the world, the word is Elohim. And people have mistaken that to mean it's a plurality, because if, if you know anything about Hebrew, there's, uh, there's Yachid and there's Rabin, and it seems to be talking about a plurality. So then we have immediately after that the statement that those who are going to make a mistake... Yeah, hey, listen, I, I, just, I just need to jump in, though, because our time is short. Understand this. I'm giving you radio time, 100% convinced, 100% convinced that those truly seeking God will find Jesus Yeshua as Messiah. And I, and, that, I, and, Messiah. And I, I, I know you have a purpose. I'm giving you free radio time across the country, and then we're actually, we actually pulled the, the clip of our interview last time and, and put it up on YouTube just separately so people could hear it. I just want you to know that what Ellie Cohen and others have said to you is exactly right. You are, without knowing it, and Lubavitcher Rebbe, without knowing it, and Lubavitchers that believe he's the Messiah, without knowing it, are strengthening the hands of all those 
who've recognized Jesus as Messiah. You want to hear a prophecy, Mandel? Uh, when, before the Baba Cherebi died, before he died, I told this to people, I just didn't have the time to print up tracks. I wanted to print them up in Hebrew and Yiddish. I didn't get to it. I said, he's, when he gets sick, they're going to say he's suffering for our sins. Of course, they started quoting uh, from Isaiah 53, and even as a lamb before shears is dumb, or, or before slaughters is dumb, so he doesn't open his mouth when he has a stroke. I said, when he dies, they're going to immediately say his death was an atonement for this generation, and then they're going to speak of his resurrection. What surprised me was that they also began to speak some of his divine nature. That surprised me. Some began to speak of his second coming. That's that's why Professor David Berger raised the issues that he he did. So I understand your purposes, and and as long as it's uh, not every week or something like that, I'm I'm happy to continue the discussion. I'm totally happy to do it. It's educational anyway. It's educational. It's fascinating, and that's a great goal of my shows. I want people to be educated, learn, and think. Friends, explore the credentials: Jesus, Yeshua, the Messiah, or Menachem Mendel Schneerson, the Messiah. By all means, explore. And Mendel, uh, God willing, one of these days we'll run into each other and we can talk further face to face. But glad to give you the free airtime because I've got nothing to fear. And I think you're helping the cause of the gospel more than you realize. May the Lord open your eyes to who Jesus Yeshua really is. 